Dr. Wendy Galerner of Pace Turf. We've produced this short video in answer to a question that we're frequently asked by golfers, and that is, why does turf struggle so much during the summertime? We get asked this question during every heat wave, but the summer of 2010, with its record-breaking heat and humidity, makes it especially important for us to answer this question now. The good news is that over the past 10 years, there has been research generated at universities like Rutgers in New Jersey and Auburn University in Alabama that sheds new light on our understanding of how heat impacts turf quality and growth. Before I share that information with you, though, uh, we're going to take a quick change in gears and move from the lab into the kitchen, where we're going to fry an egg. What does frying an egg have to do with turf grass science? Quite a bit, actually. Here's why. When an uncooked egg is first broken into the frying pan, the clear liquid surrounding the yolk, which is composed of a protein known as albumin, is clear. However, as the egg begins to cook, the heat causes the structure of the albumin protein to unravel and to basically be destroyed. And then, very soon afterwards, the unraveled chains of albumin will recombine to form a completely different material, what we know as the egg white. This destruction of the protein by heat is known as denaturation, though in the kitchen, most of us refer to this biological process simply as cooking. Turf can also be irreversibly changed or cooked by heat, just like the egg was. But how much heat does it actually take to damage turf? Research conducted in the lab, the field, and the greenhouse shows us that cool season turf, such as bent grass, bluegrass, or ryegrass, prefers temperatures in the 60s and 70s Fahrenheit. When air temperatures reach above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, this spells real trouble for the cool season turf, especially if those high temperatures persist for several hours or more. In contrast, warm season turf, like Bermuda grass, has stress that's triggered at much, much higher temperatures, usually above 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is why it's relatively rare to see heat stress on warm season turf. But even lower temperatures can cause problems if turf is stressed by high humidity, low mowing heights, pests such as insects or diseases, tournaments, or heavy traffic. One other important piece of information helps round out our understanding of how heat affects turf. Research done by Dr. Bing Ru Wang at Rutgers University tells us that although we first see the symptoms of heat stress uh, for on turf in the foliage or the leaves of the turf plants. Where the action is actually taking place is underground at the roots. The roots are the most sensitive or most vulnerable portion of the plant when it comes to heat. Unfortunately, because the roots occur underground, the changes that first take place when heat causes damage are completely invisible to us. If we could look underneath the soil at roots when they're first starting to respond to heat, we'd see that they would slow down in their growth and eventually stop growing. And as a result, they would stop transporting water and nutrients up to the leaves of the plant. If we went back above ground, at the same time, what we'd see is first actually nothing. The plants would look relatively healthy for a while. Only after time would they begin to wilt and discolor as a result of the fact that they're no longer receiving nitrogen, iron, and other nutrients, and they're no longer receiving enough water. At first, the problems will be restricted to a few small patches of dead or dying turf. But as hot conditions persist, turf will seem to die almost overnight. The problem is that once we see the above ground symptoms of turf damage, it's almost always too late to correct it. The damage has been done to the turf roots and to the turf leaves. And just as it is impossible to reverse the sequence of events that lead to the creation of a fried egg, it's equally impossible to reverse the effects of heat damage to turf. 
Superintendents who were faced with rescuing heat damaged turf therefore face some very difficult decisions. The first thing they have to do is to decide if the turf can be salvaged. And so they will have to incorporate some procedures to see if there are any plants left alive and if they can encourage those plants to grow. They'll do this using some practices that golfers may not like that much. That would include increasing mowing heights, more frequent hand watering, which will um, perhaps make surfaces wetter than is desirable, aerifying, which may make greens a little bit bumpy, and even the use of fans to cool down soil temperatures. If the heat's been too destructive though, even all of those measures may fail and it will be necessary to either reseed or resod the entire area. We hope that this video has helped to communicate some of the difficulties of managing turf during the summertime. We hope you've enjoyed it and please feel free to share this information in this video with other golfers. Thanks.